Amen. We're not going to teach it right now. Pastor Glenda is going to teach about it after our prayer time, but we're going to start doing it. Amen. This is a job. It's what it says. In modern times, it's known more by Rosh Hashanah, but in the Bible, known by Yom Teruah, the day of blood or the day of the shout. And the only thing that God said to do today is shout and blow shoulders. through Balaam. Balaam was hired to curse Israel, and he tried to mix a cult and other gods with the God of heaven and earth. And the God of heaven and earth prevailed. Hallelujah. But one of the things that Balaam prophesied was, he says, you know what, I'm going to read it. not only today are we to shout to the Lord, listen to this. Actually, I'm going to hold it because that is kind of in my eye vision. (laughs) He says, rise, Balak. Hear me, son of Zippor. God is not a man who lies or a son of man who changes his mind? Does he speak and then not do it, or promise and not fulfill it? Look, I received a command to bless. He has blessed, I cannot change it. No misfortune is to be seen in Jacob, and no misery in Israel. 
Adonai, their God, is with them. The king's shout is among them. Shout to God with the voice of joy. Thank you, Lord. For the Lord Most High is to be feared, a king, a great king over all the earth. He subdues peoples under us and nations under our feet. He chooses our inheritance for us, the glory of Jacob, whom he loves. God has ascended with a shout. The Lord with the sound of the trumpet. We ascend with a shout with him. Sing praises to God. Sing praises. Sing praises to our king. Sing praises. For the God, for God is the king over all the earth. Sing praises with a skillful psalm. 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you for skillful psalms. We bless you this morning, God. God, God reigns over the nations. He, he sits on his holy throne. The princes of the people have assembled themselves as the people of God, the God of Abraham. For the shields of the earth belong to God. He is highly exalted. The Lord reminded me this morning that he is the God of the atmosphere. He is the God of this whole world. And he told me, there is no place that you can go that I will not find you. There as long as you shout my name and glorify me, I will be there for you. I will cover you with my grace and mercy. I will give you life, life abundantly. If you just praise me and worship me and acknowledge that I am the God of the universe, that there are no other gods before me. So lift me up and praise me and I shall shower you, shower you with love and grace and mercy. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We shout your name. You are the God of heaven and earth. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I shout your name, Lord, hallelujah, you are my God, hallelujah, you go before me, you even follow after me, oh, Father, you shower me with your love, I thank you, Father, we thank you today that you are present with us, Lord, that you will never leave us nor ever forsake us. We thank you, Father.
Your throne, O Lord, is established from of old. Oh, 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 oh. More majestic than the sounds of many waters, more majestic than the breakers of the sea, so majestic is the Lord on high. Your testimonies are very sure. Holiness befits your house, O oh Lord. Yay. Blessed is the one that you dis discipline, O oh Lord, and teach him from your Torah to give him rest from days of trouble. For the Lord will not forsake his people. He will never abandon his inheritance. For rightness will be restored to justice, and all the upright in heart will follow it. Oh, come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. Let us shout joyfully to him with songs. is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth. Lord, today, today in your hands are the depths of the earth. We announce your kingship. We announce your lordship. Ho, hallelujah. Into the depths of the earth, on the earth and in the atmosphere above the earth. You are king of kings and lord of lords. Hallelujah. The mountain peaks are his. The sea is his. He made it. His hands formed the dry land. Come, let us worship. Let us kneel before the Lord our maker. For he is our God. We are the people of his pasture. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord. Bless his name. Proclaim the good news of his salvation from day to day. We are proclaiming the good news of your salvation today. Hallelujah. We are declaring the prosperity of the gospel throughout the earth today.
I am the God above all the nations and I will be exalted throughout the whole earth. Yes. Here he stands, the commander. The mighty Lord of angel armies is on our side. The God of Jacob fights for us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's the commander and we're following him as he leads us in triumph. Hallelujah. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done wonderful things. His right hand and his holy, holy arm have gained the victory for him. The Lord has made known his salvation. He has revealed his righteousness in the sight of the nations. He has remembered his loving kindness and his faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Shout joyfully to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth and sing for joy. Sing praises. Sing praises to the Lord with the lyre. Sing praises with lyre and the sound of melody with trumpets and the sound of the horn. Shout joyfully before the King, the Lord. Woo! Let the sea roar and all it contains, the world and those who dwell in it. Let the rivers clap their hands. Let the mountains sing together for joy. the rivers clap their hands. I don't know how rivers clap their hands, but that's, that, what? Oh yeah, okay, rivers of life, very good. So the rivers are joining us this morning. Yay, yay, Lord. You're worthy to be praised, Lord. We bless you.
that you would be mindful of us. You love us unconditionally. So we will dance before you and honor you as we run like little children unto you. We go up into your arms. We covet you as our heavenly Father. <laughs> you love us with a love that is pure. And you take care of us and all our needs as we run. hearts exalt you, O oh God. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you. Oh Lord, we lift our praise to you out of Psalm 145. I will extol thee, my God, O oh King. I will bless thy name forever and ever and ever. Every day I will bless thee. And I will praise thy name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Great is the Lord. Your greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall praise thy works to another and shall declare thy mighty acts. I will speak of the glorious honor of thy majesty and of thy wondrous works. And men shall speak of the might of thy terrible acts and I will declare thy greatness. They shall abundantly utter the memory of thy great goodness and shall sing of thy righteousness. The Lord is, ha, the Lord is gracious and full of compassion slow to anger and of great mercy. The Lord is good to all and his tender mercies are over all his works. All thy works shall praise thee, O Lord, and thy saints shall bless thee. They shall speak of the glory of thy kingdom and talk of thy power to make known to the sons of men his mighty acts and the glorious majesty of his kingdom. Thy kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and thy dominion endureth throughout all generations. The Lord upholdeth all that fall and raiseth up all those that be bowed down. The eyes of all wait upon thee and thy giveth them their meat in due season. Thou open thy hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. Oh, the Lord is righteous in all his ways and holy in all his works. 
The Lord is near to all that call upon him. To all that call upon him in truth. He will fulfill the desire of them that fear him. He also will hear their cry and will save them. The Lord preserved all them that love him. But all the wicked will be destroyed. My mouth will speak the praise of the Lord and let all flesh bless his holy name forever and ever and ever. Let all flesh declare his glory. Let all flesh bless his name. We bless your 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 name, name, O God. just been coming in hallelujah this is a day of the shout this is the day of praise this is the day of blowing shofars this is the day of the high praises of our king being on our lips so as we're coming uh, close to the um, to the transition out of courts of prayer let's just all offer our praises to our God today hallelujah let's just forget everything else Let's put our eyes, our attention, our focus on him, the glorious King of kings and Lord of lords, the highly and exalted one. Hallelujah. Just lift your voice in any way. You can shout. You can sing. Hallelujah. Give him thanks. Give him praise. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. There's none like you. Woo! Hallelujah.
feels pretty good in here. Nothing like a happy new year. Right? Nothing like a happy new year. Okay, so so let's uh, let's just take some time. And here's what you're going to do. This is what you're going to do. <laughs> you're going to wish happy new year to everyone. You're going to stand up and you're going to take some minutes and greet one another. Uh, take a minute or two to, if you don't know somebody, introduce yourself. But listen, this is... This is the Hebraic new year. According to the, the, the calendar, I believe, that God goes by, <laughs> according to his scheduling and his timing, this is the new year. I mean, today is the new year. Yeah, right now, it's, it's just 10 o'clock. They are celebrating with all that is in them in Jerusalem. Right now. It is a big deal, and it's being released right now. And so... So uh, we want to bless those that are celebrating there and continue to pray for the peace of Jerusalem, but this is the new year. So let's celebrate that. Greet one another. Happy New Year, everybody.
Good morning. <laughs> oh, if you have a bulletin with you and you want to follow along, let me just highlight a couple of announcements. Um, you'll notice that inside your bulletin was a little yellow half sheet of paper like this. And what this is for is we have a team that goes out um, down to the um, Biddle House, if you know where that is. That's the place that they're um, now, uh, I guess we'll say the word, they're uh, adjusting the location for the homeless in our city. Um, Larry Rice's uh, New Life Evangelistic Center is not operational, and so they're opening the Biddle House for them. And so we have a team that goes down there. And um, Helena, will you just wave at everybody? Helena leads that team with prayer and evangelism. And one of the things they do is, um, Diana, hold up one of those sacks. They make sacks that have snacks, food, just, those, just little things in them, okay, to just bless them and help provide for them. And so we want to partner with them. And this is a list of things that would be helpful for them. And so we have a container out in the foyer and when you're at the grocery store or you're out shopping, if you could pick up some of these items, that would be great. Um, I also just want to share this because it was the heart of this team. You know, we also, every month, we take our turn at the Salvation Army down in St. Charles providing once a month a meal for those people. The Salvation Army is closed on the weekends. And so for about... 10 years, I believe now, we have been taking our turn once a month with other churches to make sure that there's a meal served over the weekend. And so what it was the heart of this team was that they didn't want people to feel like they would, they didn't want people to take away from what they're donating to that ministry to give to this. And so they wanted that expressed. And so I appreciate that because we want to keep honoring what uh, Chris and Carol are leading and all of you who work at that ministry to help provide for that. But this is another way that people can, uh, if everybody, you know, if it, my experience is if everybody does a little bit, it all adds up to a lot. And God multiplies. And God multiplies. So that's what that's about. So just take this home, and when you have things to drop off, there's a container out in the foyer. Well, it's a good day in the house of the Lord. <laughs> if I could have a little more light. There we go. Thank you. <laughs> so this is an exciting day. If you look in your bulletin, you see a picture, and you'll see that we've said this is, today is a major biblical time marker, and you're like, what is that? Maybe you've never heard of Yom Teruah. Maybe you've looked on your calendar in your purse before and you've seen the words Rosh Hashanah and you thought, oh, that must be some Jewish thing. Well, it, that's what they call it currently on your calendar. They call it Rosh Hashanah. But in the Bible, it's called Yom Teruah. And so, and the, again, there's been many, many translations, so your Bible may say Rosh Hashanah. But um, if we go back... I'm going to just take a few minutes and bring us all to the same page because we want to be in unity, what we're getting ready to do this morning. We want to embrace this experience together because it's truly an experience that God provided for his people. And so I'm going to share for just a couple minutes about this feast of the Lord because it's a feast. We're getting ready to feast on the goodness of the Lord. That means we're getting ready. Like when you go to a feast... You don't just sit there and stare at it. You participate. And so we're getting ready to participate in something in just a minute that's going to literally let us just ingest and release the goodness of the Lord. And so I want to talk for just a minute about where this is in Scripture and how we it applies to us today. And so um, some of my notes, I would just want to give honor to David Mitz. He's a, a wonderful man that we got to go to Israel with a few years ago. And he has a book actually called The Feast of the Lord, Preparing the Bride of Messiah. That's us. That's us. So anyway, and so he talks about how these feasts are an eternal reminder of God's covenant and how there's a spiritual impartation. Don't you like spiritual impartations? Don't you like that? When you don't have to really do anything except for just open yourself to the Lord and you just get like a download, 
so that's some of the things that happen that he calls us. And so this is, this is one of the things in scripture that's a pattern, a pattern of heavenly things that God established to literally woo us in and establish not only for now, but you know, Jesus says Jesus is the same yesterday, today, forever, but also to prepare us even more for things that are to come. So I'm going to speak for just a minute on that. So where this is referenced the first time in scripture uh, specifically is in Leviticus 23, where it says, again, the Lord spoke to Moses. Now what God was doing was they had come out of slavery. And so someone else had been running their life. You ever been there where somebody else is running your life? (laughs) <laughs> Something else is running your life. And God says, I want to set up patterns in your life now that are going to bring you into the fullness of all that I have for you. And so he had to teach them how to not be slaves anymore to the world system. And so literally today, actually right now in Israel, it's sundown there, and they're getting ready right now to blow the trumpets, okay? And at that moment in time... Basically, what happens is that nation stops and they stop operating according to the world's time structure and they re-enter their heritage, their calling, their purpose by participating and re-acknowledging and instituting these feasts that the Lord has assigned to them. And so in scripture, you know, it says that God said, Jesus said that he wanted us to be one new man with Israel. So what we're going to do today is we're going to participate with them and heaven is going to see us Gentiles participating with Israel, the Jews, because see, God's looking down from way up there. We're looking here, but he's looking there and he's going to see Jew and Gentile, one in Messiah, literally releasing the shout of the Lord. That's what we're getting ready to do. It's going to be exciting. (laughs) See, if we see things from heaven's viewpoint, it's very exciting. Sometimes we look at it this way and we're thinking, oh, what is that? No, no, no. We have to look at it from what heaven's perspective is. So that's what we're getting ready to do. So the Lord said to Moses, speak to the sons of Israel saying, in the seventh month, on the first day of the month, you shall have a rest. Don't you like that? A reminder by blowing of trumpets, a holy convocation. And these, now we don't know exactly, I'll just tell you, I I, I read a lot of things and there are a lot of people say, well, God didn't say why we should do it. You know, sometimes God doesn't tell us why we should do something. Sometimes he just says, I just want you to do this. I think there's some reasons why, and I'll share those in a minute. But we do know that in Exodus 12, he reestablished the order of the months based on Passover. He said to them, this month, when the the very first Passover, he said, we're going to reorder the months. And now Passover, the month of Passover is now the first month. So now seven months later, where we are now, is the seventh month. So today, it's sundown, is the first day of the seventh month. So here we are. We're in the time gate. Isn't that exciting? I'll just tell you this. Anytime my life starts seeming kind of crazy, like I don't know, like quite have my bearings, I know what to do. I know to go back and look at the the calendar. God's calendar, not my calendar, not my schedules, not my plans, but God's timeline and say, okay, where are we at in God's time? Where am I at? And it is amazing how much more sense things make. All of a sudden I go, oh, that explains it. So here we are today. We're on the first day at sundown of the seventh month. And we do know that the number seven has great significance to God. Think about all the sevens in the Bible. We know he did many things in groupings of seven, and we know it means completion. So I believe there are many things that happen at the seventh month. And I can just tell you, there's some things happening in my life right now. They're happening in the next 24 to 48 hours that are not an accident that they're happening right now. That I've been waiting for some things. I've been laboring for some things. I've been questioning some things. And now suddenly, they're falling into place. Now you might say, well, that's no big deal. But see, I think it is a big deal. Because I think God orders our steps in times and in seasons. 
So I see, I don't think it's an accident that my mother tomorrow on Rosh Hashanah is moving into her apartment. I don't think that's an accident. And I could tell you about three or four other things that are happening in the next 48 hours that are not an accident because God is saying, I'm ordering your steps. I have a plan. And he's saying, you're in time, on time, in my time. But sometimes till we get to that time, it feels like a long time. Okay, so today we're going to sh- blow the trumpet, uh, the shofar in a few minutes, and we have um, a friend here from Destiny Church, Mark Frumhoff, and he is a, 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 a Jew who believes in Jesus as Messiah, and he's going to lead us, he's going to blow the shofar, and we're going to shout, and when you shout, you're shouting, because first of all, we're shouting because God says on this day, I just want you to, I just want you to Blow the trumpets. I want you to shout. I want you to roar. Because even if you can't Come see on. it, there's some things that have been completed. Yes. And there's some things that are going to start fresh for the new year for you. So we're going to do that. Okay? But I just want to give you a little more background. So first of all, I said to you earlier, this happens at sundown because just like in the scripture, God said God made evening and then morning and then it was the first day. So if you're looking at scripture, when they call something the day or a day, it starts in the evening first and then goes to morning. So at sundown, we will start. And right now it's almost sundown in Israel. And so right now they're getting ready to blow. They're getting ready to shout. They're getting ready to signify the completion of the old year. So when the calendar was reestablished, God said the first month is going to be this, but the governmental calendar is today. So the change of the year is today into 5779. And the Lord said, I want you to start it with a shout. Don't you love that? Don't you love that when that trumpet blows, you can just say, anything I didn't like that happened last year, I'm just blowing you away. (laughs) You are in the past. It is over. I'm moving forward. The Psalmist David, okay, I'm going to show you several scriptures. The Psalmist David acknowledges this feast day in Psalm 81. He says, sing for joy to God our strength. Shout aloud to the God of Jacob. Begin the music, strike the tambourine, play the melodious harp and lyre. Sound the ram's horn at the new moon when the moon is full on the day of our feast. You say, well, that could be any feast. The thing is, is that's the Yom Teruah feast because it's the only feast tied to the new moon. So David was specifically referring to today that see he see David was really in not interesting he was amazing he understood God's time he understood he was in sync with God don't you think Mm -hmm. the other interesting thing that's interesting is if you go down to verse 16 it says with honey from the rock I'll satisfy you Now, do you know that today and tomorrow in all of Israel, one of the things they're going to be doing, see, they may not even understand what they're doing, but we understand what they're doing, and it's prophetic, and it's aligned with Scripture, and as we sync up with what they're doing, we're releasing grace, grace, grace to them to have more revelation of of what it is that's really happening so that they can have their so that we can all, one in Messiah, have our eyes open to the amazing things of God. Because he says here, with honey in verse 16, from the rock, I'll satisfy you. And so they're going to start having honey and apples for the next 48 hours, and they may not even understand that it's a part of what God already put in place. Don't you find that sometimes happens? That you start doing something just because you feel like you should, or just become something like, you know, I think this is what I'm supposed to do. And then all of a sudden later, you get the confirmation. Oh, that was right there all along. Joshua 6. When Joshua faces his first battle in the promised land, it is not an accident that the spiritual weapon God has him use to bring that wall down is what? A shout. And how many priests were there? Seven. How many trumpets were there? Seven. How many times did they walk on the seventh day around that wall? Seven. And then they shouted. 
We're going to do some shouting here in just a minute. He says, when you hear the trumpet blow, you lift up a shout, and that wall will come down. Now, I don't know if you've had any walls this last year. <laughs> I don't know if you've still got some walls that you think they need to come down and be flattened because I'm really tired of going around this circle and around this wall. You know? Now, I find, you know, this is a whole other sermon, and I'm not going to preach it, but I was thinking... You know, the interesting thing is he told them those first six days. Now, think about all the people that are doing this. He told them, don't make a sound, not even a peep. Don't speak one word. Can you imagine that many people for six days not speaking a word, not making a peep? Now, I guess if your life depends on it, it's a lot easier. But can I just say that sometimes our life does depend on it. Sometimes part of the battle is to be quiet until God says, shout. Until he says, you listen for me and I'll tell you when to speak. Sometimes there are seasons we just have to be quiet. And that's part of the warfare. Did you know that? That being quiet and not speaking is sometimes a, a weapon, a spiritual weapon. Because until we hear God say, now you can speak. Now you can shout. Now you can blow that trumpet. It will not have the same effect if we're just over here. So they, I found that interesting. You can think about that. So we know that the number seven is associated with shouts of victory. Are you ready to shout for some victory for the coming year? Okay, I'm gonna give you one more example. Okay, Ezra, Ezra the scribe. I have a grandson named Ezra. He recognized the significance of the seventh month and they had just come out of Babylon, they had just rebuilt the wall and on the first day of the seventh month, he gathered them at the water gate in Jerusalem says he gathered all the people. And I love this scripture. It says, when the seventh month came and the Israelites had settled in their towns, all the people assembled as one man. Don't you love that? That's what we're doing this morning. We're going to operate as one man. Jew and Gentile and Messiah. It says they assembled as one man in the square, which would have been the place of government before the water gate. And the water gate was where the water came and it flowed down out of the temple. What an amazing place to gather the people. <laughs> what an amazing place to say, we're gonna gather here. And they told Ezra the scribe to bring out the book of law of Moses, which the Lord had commanded. So on the first day of the seventh month, the priests brought the Torah teaching before the assembly, which was made up of men and women and all who could understand. He read it aloud from daybreak till noon as he faced the government square before the water gate where the water flowed down from the temple. I've inserted those explanations. And all the people listened attentively. He opened the book and the people could see him because he was standing above them. And as he opened this book, the people all stood. We're going to all stand in just a minute. And we're going to come before our Lord. And we're going to position ourselves to do something very holy. And Ezra praised the Lord, the great God, and all the people responded, Amen! Amen! And in Hebrew, I just want to say this, the word Amen is an acrostic for El, I'm probably not going to say this right, so those of you who speak Hebrew, you can correct me later. For El Malik Ne'eman, which means God is a faithful king. <laughs> God is a faithful king. And they begin bowing down. They begin worshiping with their faces to ground. But then the Levites began teaching again, and they began to, and they all stood for that reading of the, the, uh, the word. And then Nehemiah the governor, Ezra the priest and scribe, and the Levites who were instructing the people said, This day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep. I don't care what's happened this last year. Come on. No more crying over it. It's over. It's done. Can I just say that again? It's over. It's done. 
It's done. For all the people had been weeping. Now they'd been weeping because they were in repentance because they had, they, the word was just not coming back and they realized they had not been obeying the word. And let me just say there's a time for that. There's a time. The next 10 days are called the 10 days of awe, and it's all about repentance. And if there's anywhere in our life that we realize that God shows us. So I believe when we lift up a shout and we come into agreement with heaven, it opens something inside of us that if there's anything in there, it lets that begin to resonate, that glory begin to resonate with us. It says, oh, by the way, this can't stay there anymore. Oh, yeah, and by the way, this little thing over here that you've been, like, kind of hiding, um, it needs to get out of there. So we're in that holy time. And so Nehemiah says, go and enjoy choice food and drinks and send some to those who have nothing prepared. This day is sacred to the Lord. Do not grieve. He's even saying, even though you've not been obeying my, the word, even though you completely lost it, like you were not even following, he's saying, that's over now. Don't you like that? It's a new beginning. Don't grieve anymore. Repent and move on. For the joy of the Lord is your strength. Yeah. <laughs> That's where we're at. That's where we're at. So I want to get ready. I want to get ready. Are you ready? Yes. <laughs> I'm yes. ready. So I'm going to ask David to come forward, and he's going to bring the shofar, and we're blessed to have him. Yes. Are you ready? And we're going to stand. Are you ready? Let's stand. A mark. I'm sorry. I called you David. Maybe that was prophetic. I don't know. It probably is just my me, but anyway. Okay. <laughs> anyway, Mark, and so I'm going to read this passage out of the Passion Translation, and then he's going to blow, and then we're going to shout. And we're going to welcome the new year, and we're going to join with Jew and Gentile, one in Messiah in Israel, and we're going to let heaven just see the people of God celebrating the new things that he is about to do. He is about to open up new windows. He is taking us into a new... I love it. See, God, his mercies are new every morning. I love it. He lets us have times of rest every night. He established a pattern of rest in our life on the Sabbath. He says, I want you to go to bed at night and not worry. I want you to come together once a week and not worry about what else is going on. Just worship me. And then I also want you to have these set-apart times where you just come and you just rest and you just celebrate and you let me take care of things. How many are ready to let God take care of some things? So today is a day of rest. Today is a day of celebration. Today is not a day to worry. So when you begin to roar and shout to the Lord, you need to release all of those worries and all those concerns and say, you know, in your heart, I completely trust you that you've got this. You establish this day that I am to rest and I'm to celebrate and I'm to have a feast with you. So I'm going to read out of the Passion Translation. Psalm 89, 15 through 18. Oh, Lord, how blessed are the people who experience, who know intimately the shout of worship. For they walk in the radiance of your presence. We can do nothing but leap for joy all day long. For we know who you are and what you do. And you've exalted us on high. We sit with him in heavenly places. The glory of your splendor is our strength. And your marvelous favor makes us even stronger, yes. lifting us even higher. You are our king, the holiest one of all. Your wraparound presence is our protection. That's okay. Take your time.
we need seven trumpets. Mike, is there some more trumpets we're going to blow together? You ready? Are there some more back in the back, Kingsley? Uh, I got, there's one right down there. Quay, right down there. you and Mike. One anybody right else? Down. Quay, you want to grab one? There were seven in the Bible. So if we got some more, if anybody else brought theirs, we'll do it together. You are welcome. Here's what you need to understand. It's more yes. about the air going through. Yes. I mean, it's great that the sound comes out, but that's all, it's the blowing. This is the time of blowing. We're actually hearing what? the sound of blowing. And I think that's really important because sometimes you hear the, the tone or the note and you miss the point that this is the time of blowing. Yeah. And we blow in and his voice comes out. Yes. And it's his spirit that is moving in this time and season, blowing on us. Yes. Okay, here we go. Let the trumpets blow. And let the people shout. Ha!
you are good. And in the sun or rain, my life celebrates. Because you are good. You are good. Oh, and with a cry of praise, my heart will proclaim. You are good. Oh, you are good. And in the sun or rain, my life celebrates. You are good. Because you are good and I'll dance because you are good and I'll shout because you are good. You are good to me. Oh, I'll sing because you are good and I'll dance because you are good and I'll shout because you are good. You are good to me. Yes, I'll sing because you are good and I'll dance because you are good and I'll shout because you are good you are good to me oh I'll sing because you are good and I'll sing because hey and I'll you are good you are good to me Now lift up another shout. Come on. shame washed whiter than snow you have redeemed and made me whole I'm saying grace you've shown me grace you lifted my shame you drawn me with loving kindness and washed whiter than snow you have redeemed and made me whole Jesus you have won me you have broken every chain with love and mercy you have triumphed over death and you how worthy of glory and praise. Jesus, Jesus, you have won me. You have broken every chain with love and mercy. You have triumphed over death and you are worthy of glory and praise. Show me love by leaving your throne, by bleeding and dying on the cross, that wonderful cross that took all my guilt and sin away. chain with love and mercy you have triumphed over death and you are worthy of glory and 
Rescue and save. Up from the ashes, your love has brought us out of the darkness and into the light, lifting our sorrows, bearing our burdens, healing our hearts. To our God we lift up one voice, to our God we lift up one song, 
To our God we lift up one voice, singing Alleluia. To our God we lift up one voice, to our God we lift up one song, to our God we lift up one voice. Chains have been broken, our eyes have been opened, an army of dry bones is starting to rise, and death is defeated. We are victorious, for you are alive. And to our God we lift up one voice, to our God we lift up one song, to our God we lift up one voice, singing Alleluia. To our God we lift up one voice, to our God we lift up one song, to our God we lift up one voice, singing Alleluia. To our God we lift up one voice, to our God we lift up one song, to our God we lift up one voice, singing Alleluia. To our God we lift up one voice, to our God we lift up one song, to our God we lift up one voice. Make his praise glorious, glorious, glorious. For his name is glorious, glorious, glorious. Make his praise, make his praise. To our God we lift up one voice, singing Alleluia. To our God we lift up one voice. To our God we lift up one song. To our God we lift up one voice, singing Alleluia. Singing Alleluia. Singing Alleluia. Singing Alleluia. To our God we lift up one voice. To our God we lift up one song. To our God we lift up one voice. Singing Alleluia. To our God. God, we lift up one voice, singing Alleluia. Just lift your Alleluia to the Lord right now. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Oh, we lift our voice. We lift our sound. We lift our sound.
Jesus, you want me. been defeated death couldn't hold you down the enemy's been defeated death couldn't hold you down Lift our voice in victory. We're gonna make your praises loud. The enemy's been defeated. Death couldn't hold you down. We're gonna lift our voice in victory. We're gonna make your praises loud. The enemy's been defeated. Death couldn't hold you down. We're gonna lift our voice in victory. We're gonna make your praises loud. The enemy's been defeated. Death couldn't hold you down. We're gonna lift our voice in victory. We're gonna make your praises loud. The enemy's been defeated. Death couldn't hold you down. We're gonna lift our voice in victory. We're gonna make Shout it to God with a voice of triumph. Shout it to God with a voice of praise. Shout it to God with a voice of triumph. 
lift your name up, we lift your name up. Shout it to God with the voice of triumph. Shout it to God with the voice of praise. Shout it to God with the voice of triumph. We lift your name up, we lift your name up. Shout to the Lord. the sound of thunder, come on!
I sing because you are good and I'll dance because you are good and I'll shout because you are good. You are good to me. I'll sing because you are good and I'll dance because you are good and I'll shout because you are good. You are good to me. And I'll sing because you are good and I'll dance because you are good. Come on. Come on. Well, I think we I think we just did. We high five Jesus today. That's awesome. That is awesome. <clears throat> wow. And I sing because. Okay, bring it. With the beat of the matas, I began to be aware of the angel armies. And I began to have this really strong sense in my spirit about one of the things that the Lord was saying during that prophetic act and and it's that his truth is marching on and as we are going through this time gate in the biblical year and aligning ourselves with him with his purposes with there is a cadence there is a cadence to the prophetic things that the Lord will release for this year. And there is a warfare for them to be released, but the battle is the Lord's. And that just like today, as we praise him, as we worship him, as we shout to him, we come into one new man and we come into the cadence of his heartbeat and we are joining with the angel armies of heaven just like Jacob saw them when he returned to the land of Israel. He came to the camp, the two camps, because he saw the angels. And so there is a partnership with the angel armies of heaven and with us, and it is to bring forth the prophetic word, the prophetic things that the Lord is doing throughout the earth. There are those things that are planned by the Lord for this calendar biblical year. And this morning, we have come into agreement with that. We have crossed over the threshold. If we will but stay in this place of worship in Him, our eyes on Him. And we do agree with the prophetic plan of heaven for this year to come forth and we will march with it. Your truth is marching on. Hallelujah. Wow. Wow. <clears throat> uh, guys back there, it seems like it's still kind of booming just a little. Would you bring it back? Just on the slide, please. It's when I get close to this, but it's all good. I'll move. Well, 
It's a brand new year. It's a brand new year. And with brand new year comes brand new operation. Brand new idea. Oh, brand new hot coffee. Thank you. Want to release the kids? Yeah. Release the, release the hounds. No, release the children. Release the kids. You guys can go right now. Miss Quay has got a great for you today. Uh, well, we might. Just, just leave that one. Sorry. But Mike's got one. Do you guys need another shofar upstairs? Do you want another one? You take that. Cause Mike, do you have one or did you send it? Oh, well, then I'm going to keep this one. I just need, we just got to have one here. If, if it's the time of blowing, we need to have something to blow on. Right? So, welcome to the head of the year celebration. Yeah. Every Hebrew year is a new prophetic season. It's important to know what season we're in, isn't it? Now, I don't have a whole lot of big uh, descriptive things on PowerPoint today. I felt like my words would be more important to you. I could have like worked really long and got these things, but the truth is, it's real hard to find Hebrew letters online so that I can reproduce them. And I don't have a, uh, I, I don't, if somebody has a better uh, mousetrap for that, I would surely like to know that because I'm going to download every Hebrew letter I can so that I, I have them to be able to use them in PowerPoints and stuff. But, uh, so I'm just going to explain them to you uh, as best I can. And then in the days to come, you will see them because I'm going to have them. All right. So we need to know what season we're in. God works through times and seasons. We know that. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, you all know this particular portion. You especially will when I start quoting it. God has a time for everything. There's a time for war, and there's a time for peace. There's a time to plant and a, and a time to reap. A time to tear down and a time to build up. That's actually one of, my, one of my main scriptures for this season we're going into is, is out of Jeremiah where it talks about there's a, there's a time to do all these things, right? There's a time to tear these things down, to pull down the struggles, to do all it. But it's also, it says, most people like to do the tearing down, pulling down part. But they don't continue to read where it says, then there's a time to build and a time to plant. Because always when something is torn down, we, remember what Jesus said, that when they cast out a, a demon, they need to, you know, the house is clean and cleared out. But if something is not put in the house, if you don't replace it with the right things, then that thing comes back around again and brings all its friends. Okay, we want to, we want to tear down and bring down the things of the enemy which it's our calling, it's who we are, that's what we do, that's who we are. You are to displace evil in the world, displace any influence of the enemy. But here's the deal, the, the, once it's displaced, then you have to replace what you've pulled down and torn out with something that's right and good and according to the kingdom. It's, it's, it's so important. If you help somebody to get delivered and get free from all this stuff, then please, by all means, replace that with Jesus and replace it with the things of Jesus and the thoughts of Jesus and the words of Jesus and the miracles of Jesus, the teachings of Jesus, the commands of Jesus. Don't just say, be free and be done with them. That's the word for the decades to come, not just for the year to come or this day of celebration. We need to really adjust our brains here. We are in the midst of a massive time of transition and, and shifting, massive shakings happening. Uh, nobody feeling that? Nobody's feeling a little unsettled because of the stuff that's going down? 
I'm not just, I'm not talking politics here. I'm talking just in general. My own family, I don't want to kick my mother-in-law out of my house, but you know, I mean, she's got a new place. Well, she's moving. She's shifting. Her whole life has shifted in the last two years. And some of it, if, you know, I, I honestly believe some of us would like to go back two years and say, you know, if we could just have that a little longer. If we could, if they could have just lived a little longer. Or if we can go back and just do that a little longer. He's good, man, I was at my best right there. Let me just tell you, your best days are ahead of you. You truthfully this is the time we are in this is a time of new wine this is the time for it this is a time to not just to tear down but we've been doing that for a long time we've been doing some pioneering for a long time we've been working the land for a long time now it's time for us to build and plant this is a time of building and planting now every season is different and you try, if you try to do the same thing in every season, you're going to miss the blessing of God. Do not try and move into this new year and this new time, this new season, and do it the way you did it last season. Somewhere in here, you're going you're gonna to be off the track. Because God is not doing, it says he's, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. But every season, because he, here's, here's what he's the same in. He's the same in his massive, awesome, wonderful, always shifting and changing. His grace is the same. His mercy is the same. His love's the same. But here's the deal. Uh, do you think you know all of the love of Jesus? You think you've felt all the mercy of Jesus? You've experienced all the grace of the Lord? I don't think so. We've, be, we've gotten a measure, but there's more. <laughs> so much more. So don't miss God's blessing by thinking you're going to do it the same as last season because he's got some new things for us. In every season, we need to discern, we need to check out and, and determine what God is doing and what God wants us to do. This is a time for us to ask God, seriously, you, you, you can talk to him, you know. <laughs> and you need to really ask him this question. Okay, God, what are you doing? As a house, we're asking, God, what are you doing? In my house, we're asking, God, what are you doing? Uh, how, how many of you have had something happen and you think it's a horrible, awful thing, and then you look back and think, oh, that might be a good thing. This last week, I took one of my cars in, our van, and I've had this van since 2005. It's been a great van. It's a wonderful it's a wonderful vehicle. It's taken us on vacations. It's taken us all kinds of places. It's been a good vehicle. Have no complaints. Took it in, and I get a call back from the, from the repair guys, and they said, uh, Mr. Walker? I said, yes. Hey, this is David, and I'm, uh, I'm just calling to uh, talk to you about your, your Chrysler. I said, okay. Talk to me about my Chrysler. Well, she's been a good girl. You don't ever like to hear it start like that. Well, she's been a good girl, and she's uh, gone a lot of miles. You got almost 200,000 miles on her, and but she's done. I went, what? Why can't we squeeze another, another 10,000 out of her? Come on. She, she's not to 200 yet. He said, listen, the repairs that we need to do are, are far more than she is worth. And he's referring to her as she the whole time. I'm going, oh, boy. <laughs> he said, so really, she's done. But I will say this, she has four great tires on her. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was not my plan for that call. I'm still trying to determine 
what's the new plan? God, what are you doing? Because I have to do something. I have to have more than one car. All right, if, I mean, I could get a bike, I guess, and if you see me riding around, you'll know that that's what's happening. But all, all I'm saying is, in our particular situation, in our society as we live, and how we're, it, it really, it, we need a couple of vehicles. And so I'm thanking the Lord for what he's doing now. Here's the clue and the next key. Um, God, what are you doing? But <laughs> what do you want me to do? What do you have for me to do here? What are you shifting in our life that's going to take us? This is so prophetic. I, you're taking us, I mean, it's been good. The old wineskin, guys, has been really good to us. We've traveled many, many miles. These things have been so awesome. We've experienced a lot of things over the last 10 years. But you know, she's getting a little old and a little cracked. She's held the, what was once the new wine really well but it's time for a new wine skit. Every season is different. God, what do you want me to do? <laughs> really, you have to ask yourself. I can't, you, I can't ask for you. You have to inquire of the Lord, every one of you. And I, you know what? Here's the deal. You can. Every one of you has the capacity to see. Every one of you has the capacity to hear. Every one of you. No one is smarter than another in this realm because every one of us has to approach the same way. God, what are you doing? And God, what are you doing in me? Good questions to ask at the top of the year. Okay, how do we know God's times and seasons? Okay, Amos 3, 7, it says, God does nothing without revealing it to his servants, the prophets. Just want you to, I just want you to grab that. God does not do anything. It says God does nothing without revealing it to his servants, the prophet. He always gives prophetic revelation to reveal what he's doing in our times. He always does. He is not slack in that promise. Now, if people don't believe there's anything prophetic happening in the world, well, uh, they're going to be kind of short. They will not receive it. They will not see and quite honestly, there are going to be a few. I'm not saying that's okay, but I am saying not everyone will have the eyes to see and the ears to hear. What I'm telling you is this is, this is a house that desires to see the percolation of fresh revelation. We want to see that happen. We want you to receive that. We want you to have every opportunity to hear that, see that, function in that, walk in that. Hear it for yourself. If we receive prophecy, we can understand the times and we can prosper in every season because God gives us revelation in so many ways. I mean, obviously, he speaks things through his word, but he also speaks to the, through the world around us, through dreams, through visions, through people. God speaks prophetic words through his prophets. God speaks by rhema words. Have you ever been driving, seen a road sign, and thought, oh, God, you're talking to me? Now, I'm not, I'm not uh, standing here saying that everything on the road signs is prophetic because sometimes it's not. <laughs> a lot of times it's not. But I'm telling you, there have been times where I've been driving. I, was, I went to Chicago not long ago uh, on a prayer assignment up there with Cindy Jacobs, and I was driving up, and I'm telling you, about every 10 or 15 minutes, the Lord brought something to me, a bumper sticker, a truck passing, a sign on the... Every, it was like, boom, boom. I'm going, oh, hello. <laughs> wow. I, I mean... And I'm driving, so it's not like I can write it all down. So I'm going, hey, Siri, take a note. <laughs> Sometimes she... Go ahead. <laughs> Thank you, Siri. I... Let's cancel that. 
<laughs> there you go. That's, that's the world we live in, isn't it? That is pretty funny. <laughs> he speaks through road signs. He can. He can, bring, he can bring revelation through movies. Do not discount opportunities. He can speak. One night, I remember very clearly a number of years ago, I'd come home after working all day. Uh, I'd worked all day at the office, and then I'd gone to a, a worship event. I came home. I was tired. It was late. And I came up, and I thought, you know what? I'm just going to unwind a little bit. I kicked on the TV, and Jean-Luc Picard was on. I know, you, you are going to laugh. But he started talking, and I was sitting there going, it was, like, it was like the Lord was talking. I know this is ridiculous, but for about two minutes, after I'd had all this, this day, I've been talking to the Lord, I've been worshiping, I got home, I'm thinking, Jesus, you know, I just need to unwind, and suddenly, boom, Patrick Stewart's voice playing John Luke Picard gave me the word of the Lord in two minutes. Okay, now don't go buying all the seasons of Star Trek and say, okay, I'm going to get the word of the Lord. Sometimes he uses these little pieces to get our attention to talk to us. Don't discount that. He will, he will talk to you through your grandchildren. Thirteen years ago when my grandson was born, my first one, the Lord said, you need to watch your grandchildren as they come because they're going to be, they're going to say things and they're going to do things and they're going to speak of me and it's going to be revelation for this house. And I've watched them and on numerous occasions they have thought they were just saying things in passing or someone would think they were saying it in passing and it was the word of the Lord. Just saying. So he uses all these things. Do you know that God uh, encodes revelation in the gift of tongues? That's why it's important for you to have a prayer language. That when you pray in the Spirit, he encodes revelation there. That's why you can pray out mysteries and things that you don't understand and things that are actually coming down the road that you don't know anything about. You're laying the groundwork by praying in the Spirit. You have to have a grip on that. This is the coming season that you must have the Spirit. Amen. It's by the Spirit, not by might, nor by power, but by my Spirit, saith who? The Lord of hosts. Lord of the angel armies. Oh, my. This is a year full of angels. Just saying. You know... God has even encoded revelation into his calendar. That's what we've been talking about today and what Glenda was sharing about the shout and Yom Teruah. And 10 days later, Yom Kippur. It's the time. I mean, this is, a, this is a celebratory time of the fall feast, but they mean something. And God put them in place for a reason. A lot of Christians don't even, they don't know that God has a calendar. But I want you to be informed. As Paul said, I would not have you be ignorant, brethren. I want you to know some stuff. The Bible says a lot about it. The Jews used it and use it. The early church used it. In the dark ages, the church switched to the pagan Roman calendar, but we need to understand we switched, he didn't. God never switched his calendar. So if we want to see what God's doing, we need to look at God's calendar. We're still in the Roman year 2018. And we're just beginning the Hebrew year 5779. 5779. Every Hebrew year has prophetic significance. So let's see how we can decode God's revelation here in the Hebrew calendar. We identify a year with numbers, 5779. Seven, Hebrew is a very unique language. Uh, Hebrew numbers are also letters. And in Hebrew, numbers sometimes spell words. 
So if you're looking at that whole thing, 5779, the 5700, 5700, that could probably be best explained as, may it be the year of. That 5700, may it be the year of. And then we come with the 70, 577, 70, that's the Hebrew letter ayin. And then nine, the Hebrew letter tate. So 5779 is the year of Ion Tate. That's more show first. You're gonna show far as you're gonna hear them. So this year's symbol is an Ion. It looks kind of like a Y and a Tate, which looks like a, like a circle that goes around. And and I'll show you the symbol. It they have little little swishes and swooshes, and so I can't actually just give you a Y and a zero. It doesn't make sense. So when we see that symbol, and you see that symbol this year, it, it will remind you what this year is about prophetically. You'll see it because it's also a picture. Let me show you how that works. The, the, originally, the letters were meant, they were originally pictured. It's a pictorial language. And each letter has a prophetic meaning. The Jews believe that the Hebrew alphabet is part of God's revelation. Every letter is significant. And I really think that that's what Jesus was saying in Matthew 5, 18. Until heaven and earth shall pass away, not one yod, the smallest Hebrew letter, and not the smallest pen stroke in making a Hebrew letter will pass from Torah till all is fulfilled. Even little swooshes, little marks. The smallest Hebrew letter, the smallest part of a, of a Hebrew letter has prophetic significance. So, so when we see it, that it's the year of the Ion and the year of the Tate, those two symbols, and the year 50, well, let me give you an example about symbolically. The year 5765 was two, in the year 2005. The Hebrew letters were Samic, hey. Samic's a round letter. It looks kind of circular. The, the letter means circle or cycle, to whirl, to go round, to encircle. Hey is a more squared off letter. It kind of looks like a little door or a window, and it means window, wind, to whisper, to roar, or to thunder loudly. So Samic Hey means a circle of roaring wind, or in other words, 5765 was the year of the whirlwind. So it wasn't surprising that on the day 5765 began, the attention of everyone in America was focused on the huge circle of wind, Hurricane Ivan. The sixth strongest hurricane in history came ashore near Pensacola on that day, the exact day, on the holiest day of the year. <laughs> Ten days after Rosh Hashanah here, Yom Kippur, there came an, another one came ashore. Drove right up the middle of the state, Hurricane Jean. If you look up the meaning of the names of Ivan and Jean, those two storms, they both mean the same thing. God is gracious. I think maybe God was talking there. Even in the midst of the storm, God is gracious. In the biblical calendar, 5765 was the year of the whirlwind, and that's what we saw all year long. There were more roaring circles of wind than the world had ever seen in that year. 5765, for the first time in history, they ran out of hurricane names. You know how they do, they plot it. At the beginning of the year, they, have, they go through the alphabet and they have one that starts with A, B, C, D, a name that goes all the way down through. They don't use like X, Y, and Z, but they go all the way down and, and never have they run out of names. All was plotted out, all the planned names, Arlene, Brett, Cindy, Dennis, Emily, Franklin, Gert, Harvey, Irene, Jose, Katrina, Lee, Maria, Nate, Ophelia, Felipe, Rita, Stan, Tammy, Vince, Wilma. They ran out of names. So they started with Alpha, Beta, Gamma, Delta, Epsilon. They, they ran out of names for hurricanes. There were more tornadic incidents in the course of the whole earth. We're talking the whole, over the whole earth that year than any previous. See, and this happens every year. I'm just saying, it happens every year. God speaks through the meaning of the year. Here's another real quick example. This is like a few years later from, from that, I think uh, maybe 07. But the, one of the letters or the numbers of that year was Zion. 
Zion words include flow, gush forth, to flood, to pour forth floods. So the biblical calendar said that in sometime in 07 or in that Hebraic year, which spans the half of the years, that it was going to be a year of floods. And earlier that year, Chuck Pierce had had this, uh, he gave this interesting prophecy. He says, just watch the places that flood. That's where the Holy Spirit will begin to be poured out. So what we saw that year told us that we're on the brink of some kind of an incredible outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And all through that year, we saw floods everywhere. Uh, entire cities all over the world were inundated. Floods broke out all over the world. On the 40th anniversary of the 1967 war, Jerusalem flooded, and it's in the mountains. It flooded. Ireland flooded, England flooded, Burma flooded, India flooded, Southern Asia was underwater. Half the provinces of China flooded. Partway through that year, Robert and Linda Heidler were, um, were on a prayer journey to Ireland and they landed and got off the plane. And right as they got off the plane, they got a call from home. And the, the caller said, we've had 10 inches of rain here in Dallas. And I hate to tell you this, but your house is flooded. You know what his first response was? Okay, now he's been flying through the night, got there, all this stuff's happened. His first response was, hallelujah, revival's coming to our house. <laughs> Now we're laughing, but if you're watching God's calendar, you're not going to be surprised at what happens. Let's look at the, the letters quickly for this year. The first letter associated with the year is the letter Ion, of course. We're still in this decade of Ion. Every year is an Ion year for, for this decade. Ion represents the prophetic season we're in, and in the Hebrew language, Every year in this decade is, is associated with that letter, ion. The letter ion was originally a picture of an eye. It kind of is shaped like this, and it looks like the eye fits like in that Y. God wants to increase your ability to see, especially in this decade. And we've been growing in that sight and that seeing over the course of this decade. But this is the last year of Ion, the last year of us wanting and needing to see. And, and he says, he's saying, look again. He wants you to see beyond now, not just that you can see, but to see even beyond where we are. This is the transition season from one decade to the next. We are moving in this year to seeing beyond, not just what's around us, and obvious, but things that are not so obvious. He wants you to see in ways you've not seen before. In this decade, he wants to give you clear vision to see what you could not see before. Normally, see, we only see in the visible realm. It's, it's where we live. We get up every morning. We have our coffee. We go to work. We pay our bills. Sometimes we get sick. We're not feeling well. Sometimes we are dealing with fears, anxieties, all kinds of stuff. But there's also an invisible realm a spiritual realm, a parallel dimension, people by vast numbers of beings that the Bible calls angels and demons. That's real. It's a real realm. This is the realm we're living in, but there's also an equally more real realm functioning. But listen, it's important this year to know that because this is an I in season. This is a season of angels. And this particular year is a year I believe that there are going to be more angelic visitations and more of you will see angelic movement than have ever seen before. Hallelujah. I agree. I agree. Chuck, Pierce said, Chuck Pierce said not long ago that in this season, angelic activity is going to increase and battle will intensify. Yeah, they're going to be angels, but they're not just going, hey, let's go down the slippery slide. Hey, let's go play over here. No, they are here for a reason to assist you in the intensity. They're here to assist in these intense times and these shifting times. Satan wants to keep us ignorant of the battle we're in, and it's important that we understand we have assistance. You know, at the start of this I in season, almost 10 years ago, God gave Robert Heidler this really strange word. 
was a strange prophetic word. He said he needed to write a spiritual fiction trilogy to help people understand spiritual warfare. Now, what if you got a word like that? Okay, here's what I want you to do. I want you to write a science fiction book. Most of you say, oh, well, that's not God. Really? You would say that. You know what the Lord had told me just not long ago? That I, he wants me to write a movie script. So I've, I started I don't know how that's going to happen or how that's going to play out, how that's going to work. I, I don't know, but I'm trying to be obedient. Robert was trying to be obedient. So he wrote three books. I own a portal, I own a stronghold, and I own a rising written under a pen name. Now, why would God tell him to write a science fiction trilogy? Here's why. Because God wants us to gain vision of the war that's taking place in the invisible realm. There's always a purpose to what he asks you to do. This year, God wants to open your eyes to some things you've not seen before. He wants to give you a new awareness of the warfare that's going on behind the scenes. All around you, all the time, a new awareness of that. So you can walk in faith, walk in strength, walk in power, and walk in victory. God wants you to know Armies of angels are ready to face down any enemy you can encounter. No matter what kind of mess you're in, no matter what kind of situation you have, you have powerful allies. And that brings us back to the Hebrew meaning of 5779. In Hebrew, 5779, I'm gonna, I hope I get this right, Tav, Sheen, Ayin, Tate. That's what the numbers are. We've already seen that this can mean maybe the year of Ayan Tate, but the four letters also spell a Hebrew word, Tishat. Tishat means to stomp the hoofs or to gallop. Now, these guys that had the, the matas and the sticks today had no idea what I was going to talk about and how I was going to share that the sound that is being released. This year, is it's the time to stomp. It's the time of stomping. This year is our time. What, did it, what, did, what was the prophecy early on in Genesis? What would be underneath the heel? The head of the enemy. It's our time to stomp. It's our time to not just make noise with our mouths, although it's a good time to shout, but it's a time to stop. My wife is very quiet most of the time. But in the morning when she gets up, I'm telling you, it sounds like a herd of bison coming through the house. She walks, she's trying to be quiet, but it's like, I don't know, it, it, she has an authority to her step. I want you all to have an authority to your step Amen. that the enemy knows you're coming. Yeah. He's heard the sound of that footprint before. He's heard the sound of those hoofs, if you will, because here's the deal, angels are riding on your behalf. And he's going to hear the sound of them coming because you are in tune with what God is speaking, what God is saying, and this is a year for you to be so in tune with what he's saying that where you walk, it sounds like thousands walking. This is awesome. Jeremiah 47.3 says, The noise of the galloping of the hooves of his strong horses at the rushing of his chariots. We're talking about him, the Lord of the angel armies, Lord of hosts. Norma Sarvis from Israel was sharing at Glory of Zion uh, just last Friday, and she had mentioned this whole thing about the horses. And Chuck shared that during his intercession that morning, he had heard, he thought he was kind of freaking out, but he heard the sound of horses galloping, and he couldn't figure that out. It sounds like it was coming around. In fact, they... You know, you always first start thinking, well, is the air conditioner going out or what is happening? You hear, no, it's, listen, sometimes you just need to listen and say, you know, that sounds like horses. I'm going to agree with that. Because he's opening your ears to hear and your eyes to see. Ten years ago, there were a team of intercessors that went to, uh, to Stonehenge in England. And 
Well, long story short, they knew that those stones had been created by God. It doesn't matter what they've been used for up to this point. They knew that original intent for those stones, they had been created by God. But Stonehenge had been captured by the enemy and was and is used as a place of false worship. So here they go to the United Kingdom. Uh, Jesus had said in a, in a dream to one of the, the team, even the rocks cry out and praise, so you need to go to Stonehenge. So God told them it was important to him that the rocks of Stonehenge would cry out praise. So they partnered with a, 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 a couple that has a, a work in England, Jen and, uh, and Steve Watson, and they organized this prayer journey. And their assignment was not to confront the Druidism, not to go after witchcraft, not to fight some demons. Their assignment was to go and worship. That's it. They weren't trying to go and confront all these evil forces. They're just going to worship. So as they prepared, God began to give them some really incredible prophetic words. He said this, as the ancient rocks of Stonehenge were released to resound with the praises of God, a portal will be opened in my heavens and angels will be released. So they made all the preparations. They got, uh, went to the authorities. They got permission. Okay, here's a, this is an important thing. In this coming year, will you please remember to get permission for that which you're going to do? Get permission. It's important if you decide to go do something that you make sure that you, you get into order and, and ask permission. Don't just, I really, it's, it, it, quite honestly, I've been on a lot of journeys myself where I've not asked permission and I was always really nervous. Well, there's a reason that you're, you're nervous because you need permission. So I just started asking. We were in Chicago and we were blowing trumpets. I know this is, sounds weird, but my, our assignment was to blow the silver trumpet on all the corners in the Magnificent Mile in, in Chicago. I, I was on like 179 different corners in Chicago blowing a trumpet. Now, you know. now I was not arrested. You know why? Because I got permission. I, I, I wasn't sure how to ask permission. So at the first place, we were outside the city hall and where I have my trumpet. I've got this big silver trumpet in my hand. It's not like, I, it's pretty obvious. I'm not going to hide that. I'm standing here with my silver trumpet and, and these two officers came over. They said, hey, what you doing? <laughs> I would have asked the same thing. And several of the guys that were with me said, what are you going to say? Somebody say something, you know, like, well, you know what? I'm just going to say what I'm doing. I mean, what, the worst thing they can do is say, well, don't blow that. So I said, well, the, my plan is, our plan is to blow these, 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 this trumpet on all the corners of your city and because we're believing that it's a, announcing that Jesus is coming to the city. And the guy goes, oh, we need that. He said, you go right ahead. He said, that's awesome. He said, can we hear that? I said, sure. So I blew it for him. He goes, that's amazing. How do you get that sound out of that? You know, we're just kind of talking. And they said, you, you go right ahead. You have permission to blow on any corner you want in all of our city. So for the next week and a half, we went to every corner and blew the trumpets. It was amazing. Some people came up to us and said, would you blow that over me? Other people are doing this. One guy got his own, he had a shofar with him. He got his own thing out and went, Wah! it's like, who carries a little shofar around in the city of Chicago? I don't know, that guy did. And then we got to the end of the, the last corner we blew on. We were getting ready to go to the next one. And this guy came out, another cop, Chicago cop, and he had on his angry face. And he said, what are you doing? We said, well, We've been blowing this trumpet on every corner in the Magnificent Mile. We've blown on 179 corners. He says, well, that was your last corner. Assignment over. No, seriously. We determined at that moment that we weren't going to try and go to some place where he wasn't. Our assignment was over. That sounded like a train, man. That was awesome. <laughs> okay, didn't it? Didn't that sound like a train? That sounded like a train. So they got permission, 
And on the chosen date, they got three hours at Stonehenge. They got there at 6 a.m. They divided into teams and prayed for about an hour. Then they began to sing praises to God. Just nothing fancy, no big sound system. They just had guitars and they went out, they sang. And near the end of their time, people in the group, almost all of them started having visions and seeing things. It's like God was opening up the heavens for them. One of them said, as we were worshiping, I felt a shift in the atmosphere. Another person said, in, the, in a vision, I saw a portal open, and these armed angels on horseback were just pouring through. And, and then another guy said, I saw the same thing, and they were circling Stonehenge. And coming and riding very fast, I could hear the thunder of the horse's hooves. The portal had opened. The Lord of hosts had released his army into the earth. Stonehenge was filled with the glory of God. Okay, that's a picture of what God wants to do in this coming season, in this year, 5779. Hear the hoofs of the horses with the angels riding them. Hear the galloping of the angelic army. It's a year for the portal to open. It's a, it, it, God wants you to know help is on the way. Help is on the way. <laughs> 70, the Hebrew number 70, ayin, it means the end of captivity. Oh, I got really quiet. I mean, the jail is open. The chains are falling off. It's the year that ends your captivity. It's the year of the end of captivity. When Israel was in captivity in Babylon, God gave this promise, Jeremiah 29, 10. When 70 years are completed, I will come to you and fulfill my gracious promise to bring you back to this place. You know what's really cool to me? One of the scriptures for this whole season is Jeremiah 29, 11, the next one. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future, a destiny. This year, we're going to fulfill destiny. Amen. This year, as he promised, he's going to come to us and fulfill his promise to bring us back to the place he needs us to be. Seventy is a number of empowerment, a number of release into things that God is calling you to. Numbers 11, God poured out his spirit on 70 elders of Israel, and they prophesied. Uh, are you ready to prophesy? Because you will. Your words will be prophetic words this year. Luke 10, Jesus sent 70 out to heal the sick, cast out demons, and proclaim the kingdom. Are you ready to cast out demons, to heal the sick, to proclaim the kingdom? I believe you are ready. This is a season to receive the Spirit's power, to move forward in faith, to see signs and wonders. Expect the power of the Spirit to be poured out in a fresh way on you. There's a little one. Okay, so it doesn't matter whether it's just air or whether it's little or whether it's a big sound. <laughs> it's awesome. How many times have you felt like, I'm ready to go, and then this is all that comes out? It's okay, because it's not you anyway. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. In him we live and move and have our being. Come on, that's what you need to know this year in this pouring out, and then this year, it, this is the time. This is the time. So it's the I in and it's also the Tate. Oh, man, give me like two more minutes. Three. Tate is actually the Hebrew letter, the number nine, for this year. And it's a, a, a little round, little kind of a swooshy thing. But if you looked at a pregnant woman sideways, it would kind of look like her belly. Because this is a year of birthing. It's a womb. It pictures a womb. It also pictures a wineskin. A wineskin has a little wide part on it and a little skinny part at the top. It looks like a, a pregnant belly. Isn't that interesting? There, it's a time of birthing. It's a time of new wineskins. 
It's a time of fresh release. Their contrast in the letter Tate, this is important. There are words for good and there, there are words for good, words for pure. These are Tate words. Clean, pure, purity, cleanse, purify, splendor, clear. Those are all good, awesome words. They're Tate words. But there's also words for things like impure or defile from the same, the same word. To soil to get dirty, sink down into the mire. Okay, so this is what's important. It's important for us to learn to discern between good and evil, between pure and impure. Tate gives us this interesting picture of good and evil, and and the Hebrew letter, really, it pictures good. Uh, It it has, it's like got a a long piece and then this swirling piece that goes, it's like a long piece and then a swirl around. And the long piece, it's like a, it's like a, a person standing there. And it has this little thing on the top that looks kind of like a crown. It's like a king is standing in place. And then the other part that's bending around, is it, it kind of looks like a person that's bowing down before the king. It's kind of, it's, it's a cool picture. This letter is picturing a king and someone bowing to the king. Okay, would that word, uh, that letter be important to us? yes. It pictures God, the king of the universe. The one on the right is the man that's bowing before the king in submission and honor. So if we will bow before our king in submission and honor this year, he will release what needs to be released for our destiny. That's the picture of the word Tate. It's a picture of what it means to be good. Being good is not a matter of keeping a list of rules. Did you hear me? It's not about keeping a list of rules. That's what the Pharisees did. Kept a bunch of rules. God's trying to get us away from a bunch of rules. But to be good means you submit your life to the king, to Jesus, and honor him in everything. That's what's important. Submit your life to the king and honor him, and it all comes through, and and everything works. This is a year to acknowledge him as king. It's a year when it's important to submit to his timing, to his purposes. It's important to bow down before him and worship him. But here's the deal. The Tate also pictures evil. It can be the picture of a snake. When that little thing comes around and has a little hook, it looks like a snake that's kind of come around like that. Okay, just remember with all the good that's being released, there will be something or some entity that will oppose you. The serpent opposes you getting to your destiny. Don't turn aside to the snake. Don't turn aside to the snake. Actually, one picture uh, that somebody uh, rendered was, I I love this, and this will be a better picture for you. It was the picture of an eagle flying down and pinning a snake to the ground. What it is, is this is the eye in season of seeing, and an eagle has great sight. And I'm just declaring over every one of you that in this year, you will see the enemy where he's hiding. You will see him in the grass. You'll see him from a higher position because you're in a higher position of authority, a higher position of understanding, a higher position by the Spirit. You have angelic assistance. They're going to say, he's right there, and you're going to go, yeah, it's time to stomp. If it's a nine year, you need to know that there are pictures of the full manifestation of nine. First Corinthians 12, there are nine gifts of the Spirit. Be prepared for those to be released in and through you. Galatians 5, there are nine fruit of the Spirit. Would you please, would you please embrace pursuit of the fruit? Would you? Would you look at that list in Galatians 5? And ask the Lord, uh, what are you doing? Are you doing something in this area with me? Uh, Would you pour out your spirit in a new way on me so that I can have lots of fruit on my tree? Because there are people that are hungry. There are people that need the fruit that you will produce. Don't think so much about the gifts. Focus on the fruit first. 
It says, by their fruit, you will know them. I'm declaring over you that you are a people of the Spirit, a people of harvest, a people of breakthrough, and that you will produce good fruit so that those that are around you can go, oh, I know that. I know that smell. I know that fruit. I, I know what's hanging there. That's good. Let Holy Spirit manifest himself in you. Ion, you know another word for ion? Upper room. Oh, send your fire, Lord. Welcome what God's birthing in you. Welcome what he's birthing in your life. It's a year for the church to see vision to come to birth. We're going to see things come to fruition, to be birthed in the house. But you're going to see it in your house, in your family. It's a worldwide thing. It's not just little. It's little and big. It's all. It's international. One of the words that God released in the last week is, I am reordering your steps and times. You're about to go in a way you've not gone before. I've chosen the place you steward right now as a place for a move of my spirit in the days ahead. This new move that's initiated will affect the world. Hmm. There's much more, but I have to tell you, if it's the year of stomp, it has everything to do with wine. Stomp the grapes, stomp the enemy. You can't get wine if you don't crush the grapes. Stomp the grapes, stomp the enemy. <laughs> That's how the grapes are going to get pressed. God's going to help us to be able to do what we need to do to see the wine come forth. I believe that as we worship, it's like a big foot comes down. And things are prepared and things are pressed and things are put into order. Come on, this is our year we're talking about. This is 5779. I want you to stand to your feet. I will uh, teach some more on the year again, but because there's far much more than we could get in today. I've gone a little bit over already, but I want you to know we are in a really beautiful position this year. You're in a beautiful position this year. So here's what I'd, I'd like to ask you to do. I'd like to ask you to just, if you could just stretch your hands out right now, and just receive from him. We've shouted, we've celebrated because it's the new year and we're, we're shifting, we're doing the things that you know, God's asking us to do. We're trying to acknowledge that this is a time that he has us in. We're, this is the, 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 one of the Moedim. This, this is an appointed time he wants to meet with us and he's set aside for us. So could we just receive from him now? God, what are you saying? What are you releasing? Father, we know that you want to release all kinds of awesome things, creative things, blessing things. And we just stand positioned right now that as you desire to accelerate things to their fullness, that you will enable us to be buckled up and ready to go. I'm thanking you for every person in the sound of my voice that does have ears to hear. You do. You have them. And you have eyes to see. And Father, right now, we just receive what you have for us. We know your plans are good, plans to prosper us and not to harm us, to give us hope and a future. Some of us have been in hope deferred. We thought things were going to be a certain way, and they weren't, and it didn't turn out the way we thought. Well, God, you, you are changing it because you are our hope, our hope of glory. Jesus, we focus on you right now, and we, we lay the past aside and behind us. We're moving forward. And right now, we just thank you for the old wineskin. We thank you for all the things that have brought us to this place. We thank you for our journeys, each of our journeys that's, that's brought us to this place. And not everything has been perfect. Not everything has been a good thing. But God, you're using all of that to bring us to this time so we can be used even more fully and more mighty than ever before. And so I bless this mighty army. 
as in Ezekiel, when he saw it, he was talking about these bones. And you ask him if they could live, and he said, well, only you know. Well, Father, that's our prayer to you right now. Only you know what's ahead of us. Only you know what we can become. Only you know how we're going to walk this out. And, and, and our desire right now is to just say yes. We will say yes to what you want to do. We'll say yes to your new wineskin that you're, 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 you're helping to bring into, into place right now all over the earth. And Lord, let us be a house of new wine. Let us be a people of fresh bread and new wine. Let us be the place that will release. Let us be the people that will release. Let us be the families and have your heart. The ambassadors, the embassies, we need to be to release all of your fullness of your kingdom in the days ahead. And we bless what you're releasing now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So be it. I had an interesting thing happen this week. I went to a place to, to drop off some uh, clothing and some stuff at a, at a place I like to, to bless. They take care of missionaries, and so I, want, I always want to help them. And while I was in there, I saw this gavel laying there. It was the day they were concluding the, the, the hearings, one of the last days of the hearings. And I thought, well, you know, I don't need a gavel. I have a gavel or whatever. And I went home, and the Lord said, you need to go back and get that. I gave, I, I, I've placed that in your path because I'm trying to talk to you. So I went back, and I thought, you know, these things are not, uh, they're not cheap. A good wood gavel is, you know, it could be $40, $50. And uh, it was $2.50. And I thought, that's a cheap gavel. And the Lord said, no, no not really cheap. They just don't know what it's worth. He said, I need you to know that the government is on my shoulders and all the things that you've been praying, all the things you've been releasing and praying for what I want, not what everyone else wants. I am dropping the gavel myself. And so, you know, we, we, we want to value the things that the Lord brings in our path. So I'm telling you, he speaks. I don't know if you have a 250 gavel waiting for you somewhere, but I don't know. Maybe it's something else that will speak to you. But remember, he is speaking, and his revelation is able to be heard and seen. And I bless you with that. Now, the Lord will bless you. The Lord will keep you. The Lord will make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord will lift up his countenance upon you the light of his face, and the Lord will give you his shalom. Nothing missing, nothing broken, all complete, and that which has bound us to chaos is broken. Shalom, everyone. Happy New Year!